So let us get straight into today's work. Now, if you were with us on Monday, we were doing some basic simplification of expressions. We're just going to do a very quick recap to make sure everyone's happy before we move on to slightly more complicated questions. So if you are ready and rearing to go, you are more than welcome to do question one by yourself. I'm going to explain it a little bit just for anyone who um, needs a bit of help, but you're more than welcome to try question one by yourself. So the first thing that we want to do when we get questions like this is we want to figure out if I have any like terms. So looking at this, and just as a reminder, a like term is one that has the same variable and the same exponent. So here my like terms are x and 3x. Can someone in the chat tell me what type of term that negative 5 is? So what do we call a term that is just a number? Can anyone tell me if we remember from, from uh, last week? Kendra, do you want to tell us? Or do you have a question? No. Oh, no. What's happening? Kendra? All right, I'm seeing some great answers there in the chat. It definitely is a constant, well done. And so we've got two separate terms that we're working with here. And exactly as is said, terms are separated by a plus and a minus sign. So we need to just be wary of that. So we can now go add these two, uh, or the like terms together rather. And so what I get when I add my like terms, oh no is I get x plus uh, 3x, which is 4x. And then my constant just stays there. Shame, he doesn't have any like terms. So he's just going to be minus 5 by himself. Um, and that's my simplified expression. All right, so nice and easy to start off with. Remember, find your like terms. So let's see whoopsie, if you can try example 2 by yourselves. So identify your like terms and then add your like terms together. And remember, like terms, same variable with the same exponent. If you've got some answers, you can start putting them in the chat. If you have questions, please raise your hand or put it in the chat and we can sort it out. Right, if you're struggling a little bit, remember like terms, same variable, same exponent. So if I have a look here, I've got x squared y. So what I want to find is all of the terms with x squared y. Um, and so the other like term is the minus 5x squared y. So they've got the same groups of variables with the same exponent for those variables. My other like terms would be the 3xy squared and the plus, plus 2xy squared. And then minus 3xy is a separate term by itself because even though it has an xy, the exponents for x and y are different. So a separate term. Kendra, thank you. I apologize. Who knows what was happening? Technology. It's all right. Right, let's start to see some answers going on here for question two. Pop them in the chat. Or if you're feeling brave, you're welcome to raise your hand and tell me what your answer was. Anyone want to share an answer or do you need a little bit more time?
Great eight, so anyone feeling brave? Want to let me know what you got? Or try? I know. Oh, Theo, right. Theo said minus seven X squared Y, which I agree with, plus five X Y squared, which I agree with, minus three X Y, which I agree with. Excellent, Theo, thank you. So when we add our like terms, we're now adding what I've highlighted. So minus two X squared Y minus another five X Y gives me that negative seven X squared Y. The three X Y squared plus two X Y squared is plus five X Y squared. And then the minus three X Y is just by itself because it doesn't have any like terms. Excellent, well done. If that was a bit tricky, please make sure you write down the answer and you uh, double check where you're going wrong or you ask me for some help. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to assume our first day back at school was tiring and we're all easing into this lesson. That's why we're not chatty tonight. Okay, well done. Whoopsie. So that was sort of what we were doing last week. And so we're going to have a look at simplifying expressions that are a little bit more complicated, not too much more complicated, but a little bit more because we need to get the hang of these things. Now, when we simplify expressions, there are three important steps that we need to do. If you can do these three things, simplifying algebraic expressions will become a lot easier. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to identify the terms in the expression. If you know which terms you are working with, it makes life a lot easier. The second thing we want to do is simplify each individual term. So I'm just going to underline that each to remind us that we want to do each individual term. And then the third thing I want to do is I want to simplify the expression. So once you've simplified each term, we can go and simplify the expression. And what, what essentially we are doing here is we're looking for like terms across the whole expression. Apologies, my writing is just not very neat tonight. Okay, so if you need to screenshot that, do it. If you can do those three things, you got this. So we're going to put this into practice as we start to do these examples here. So let's start with the first one. We have got four times x minus two y. So the first thing we want to do is we want to see how many terms I have. Now, as we know, Terms are separated by plus and minus signs. Now I don't care about, or I don't need to consider, rather shame, we do care about, I don't need to consider any plus or minus side inside a bracket. I need to worry about the ones outside a bracket. So in this case, I actually only have one term. My term that I have is the four, and remember there's a times in between the four and the bracket. So the four times the bracket. So the next step is to simplify each term. Now I only have one term, so I just simplify this term. And in order to do that, I need to multiply the four with a bracket. In doing that, I need to multiply the four with the x, and I need to multiply the four with the minus two y. Now, if you need to, and you're not feeling 100% confident with this stuff, do a little line down the side of your page for some rough working out on the side. And I'm going to do these multiplications separately. So I've got a four times x, and I've got a four times minus 2y. I'm just putting the minus 2y in brackets because there is a minus sign there and so I need to remember that something happens when I multiply a positive and a negative. So 4 times x is 4x and when I multiply a positive and a negative I get a negative. So hopefully remember we remember our um, multiplication rules when we're multiplying with signs and so 4 times negative 2y is negative 8y. All right. That then means my simplified product, or once I've multiplied the 4, I have got, oh no, I have got 4x minus 8y. All right. So I've got a question for you guys. Is 4x or are 4x and minus 8y like terms? You can just pop it in the, the chat. Yes or no, are they like terms? 
Well done, guys. Does anyone want to tell me? You can raise your hand to speak or you can pop it in the group. Can anyone tell me why they are not like terms? Tepang, we all yours. You can unmute on your side. Um, they're they're not like terms because um both of the numbers don't have the same variable. Excellent. That's awesome. Well done. So because they don't have um the same variables, they can't possibly be like terms. Excellent, guys. Well done. I'm so glad we well done, remember all of this. All right. We have Unati. Unati, oh, is that yeah. a question or you wanted to answer something? Um, uh, I just wanted to answer it. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Unati, do you agree with um, the, the explanation given? Yes. Awesome. Well done. Okay, guys. So let's have a look at this question over here. Now, this isn't necessarily a tricky question, but it is a question where a lot of the time we make silly mistakes. So this is why I want to do it, because it's quite important that we don't make these silly mistakes. Or if we do make the silly mistakes, we know why we made the silly mistake. So remember, the first step that I said we want to do is we want to identify our terms. So terms are separated by plus or minus signs. And like I said, we don't have to worry about plus or minus signs that are inside the bracket, just the ones outside. So I actually have two terms here. My first term is just four, but my second term is the minus two times the bracket minus three X minus six Y. So those are my two terms. Second step from those steps that we spoke about over here is to simplify each term individually. So now I look at each term separately. So term one, can I simplify four? Well, no, it's four. Nothing's happening to it. I'm not multiplying it, dividing it, adding it to anything, subtracting it from anything. It's just four. So that first term is going to stay as four. And now I'm going to move on to my second term to see what I can simplify. The second term, I need to now multiply this negative two coefficient, which is the coefficient to the bracket, into the bracket. So I need to multiply both terms inside the bracket with a negative two. Again, if you want, do a little scribble section on your paper for your working out if you're comfortable that you don't need to do it that's also absolutely fine so i've got a negative two times a negative three x and while i'm writing this out can someone in the chat or can someone raise their hand and tell me what happens when i multiply a negative value with a negative value what does my answer end up being in terms of its sign Awesome, well done guys. So we know when we multiply a negative and a negative, I get a positive. So negative two times negative three X gives me positive, oh no, positive six X. And a negative two times a negative six Y gives me positive 12 Y. So from simplifying that second term, I now have got plus six X plus 12 Y. Now that is my final answer. And hopefully we can see that it is my final answer because I've got no like terms. So I can't add or subtract anything. So that's where I stop. All righty. So if we now encounter a situation or a question where we have a fraction, and there's lots of different ways to deal with a fraction. And as you sort of move into grade nine, there'll be new ways that we can deal with these types of fractions. The one of the ways we can deal with a fraction is we can separate the fraction. If two terms, so here I've got two terms in my numerator, two terms are written over the same denominator, I can separate the fraction into two. So I can say 5x over 5 minus 10 over 5, and then the rest of my expressions, so the minus minus 3. Righty. So I'm going to get you to try this. Don't stress if you get a bit stuck because there are some uh, little tricky parts to this question. But try it by yourself. Pop your, um, your answer in the chat. Or if you're feeling brave, please raise your hand and we can chat about it. 
and let's see what you get and we can work through it once you've done that. So remember, you wanna simplify each of those terms we now have there. Load sharing be dealing with me. My connection is not so good, everyone. Oh. But I can still see answers on the thing and we're learning and teacher Sam is teaching us. So well done, guys. You're doing great. If you are a bit stumped, remember, just deal with each of these terms separately. Do it step by step, one by one, and you'll get it. Right, and like I say, pop your answer in the chat so we can see, or if you want to let us know what your answer is and tell us, please raise your hand. We'd love to hear. Okay, guys, let's have a look. So like I said, deal with each term separately. There's no point in trying to do everything at the same time when it's not necessary. So I'm going to start with my first term here, which is the 5x divided by 5. Now, what I like to do with these sorts of fractions is I deal with my numbers first, and then I deal with my variables. So if I just look at the 5 divided by 5, what is 5 divided by 5? Just pop it in the chat there for me. What is 5 divided by 5? Awesome, well done, one. So what is actually happening is these fives are dividing away and we're ending up with one. And so simplifying this first term, I actually just have an X. If you wanna put one there for one X, absolutely fine. Don't have to, but you can. So the first term simplifies to an X. So now we're gonna have a look at our second term. We've got a negative 10 divided by five. So we know that a negative divided by a positive is a negative. And quick sticks in the chat, what is 10 divided by five? Whoops. Awesome, well done, two. Okay, this third term is a little tricky. Now, what we have going on here in, a th in the third term is we actually have a coefficient of negative one to this bracket. I don't have to write the one in front of the bracket, I just need to remember that there is a one there. And so what this term, or what is happening in this term rather, is I've got negative one times negative three. And we've said that a negative times a negative is a positive. And so negative one times negative three is plus three. Okay, so that was a bit of a tricky um, situation that I needed to be mindful of there. And so just remember, if you've got a negative one times a negative value or something inside a bracket, we need to bear in mind that we've got a negative times a negative or a negative times a positive. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to write this out a little bit neater so we can now work with it. My expression that I have is x minus 2 plus 3. So now I look for my like terms. My like terms here are actually just the constants, the minus two and the plus three, because those are the only ones without variables. And then I've got my X term. So the X just stays exactly as it is. Don't need to stress about them. X, but minus two plus three is positive one. So what I get there is a simplified expression of X plus one. Alrighty, so don't forget that once you've simplified each of your terms, and you've got your different answers, you still need to go and check, do you have any like terms? And if you do have like terms, remember you need to add or subtract them. Okay, so there was a lot that went on in this example. So just give me a thumbs up or a hands up or thumbs down if you have um, any questions or anything you want me to just go over again. If you're happy, just give me a thumbs up.
Let's vote, guys. Let's see. Did you guys understand? So thumbs up. And if you didn't understand, also you are allowed to put thumbs down. Mm. Yes, I see you, Lisseri. Fortunate. I see you there. Sanneliso. Yes, my people. So we understand what's going on. I'm proud awesome. of you. Well done, guys. So the last two examples that we've done are important examples because it's often, it deals with things that we often get wrong. So what often happens here is we forget that we've got a negative one there. And so we do something funny. In the last example, I'm just going to scroll there quickly. What we often try and do is we try and say four minus two first and then do the multiplication, but they're separate terms. And that's why if we follow these three steps, we're going to be absolutely fine for simplification. All righty. So let's have a look now at example four. So example four, again, we're going to follow these three steps, see how many terms I have. Now, remember, I don't have to stress about the plus or minuses inside the bracket. Uh, yeah, but I do need to stress about anything outside the bracket. So what I actually have here is one term. Now, I have two coefficients to the bracket. And what we need to remember is that this is an expression that is telling me to say 2x times the bracket x minus 3 times y. Now, when you deal with these sorts of questions, there's different ways you can do it. And I, you will never be told you have to do it this way. You do what makes sense for you. For me, I know that it doesn't matter what order I multiply something. If I say two times three times four, I'm still going to get 24. If I say three times two times four, I still get 24. The order in which I multiply things doesn't matter. I'll end up with the same answer, right? So with that logic, I'm going to say, okay, cool. Well, let me first multiply the 2x and the y. Because what that allows me to do, it allows me to bring both of my coefficients to the front of my bracket. And then this is something that's a little bit easier to deal with because we've had questions like this where we multiply the coefficient into the bracket. And so once I've put my two coefficients together, so once I've multiplied my two coefficients, I know what to do. I need to multiply the 2xy to the x and to the negative 3. And I can simplify my expression. So have a try. It's a little bit tricky. Remember that when you multiply variables, so for example, the 2xy times the x, when we times x and x, oh, <laughs> we need to go back to our um, exponent rules. So have a try. It's okay if you get stuck, we'll chat about it. And if you do have an answer, put your hand up, let's hear. Otherwise, um, pop it in the chat for us. Let's go, my people. We can do this. We can do this. I see, Lady, you are focusing. <laughs> That's a good thing. Lady, I see you. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> I also see you. You're in the dark like me. Well, <laughs> let's do this. We'll survive. Faith, I see you, Faith. You're focusing. I see you, Faith. Write some answers down. I see you. <laughs> Let's do this, my people. Remember, you are writing down on your paper. You can also give us some answers on the chat. You can raise your hands. Also, I see Atlikang already gave us some answers there. Keep them coming, guys. Oh, guys, mm. little biscuits. You are doing so well tonight. You yeah. are on it. Oh, this is what I love to see. Get so excited ah, about yeah. that. Yeah, my brain is actually feeling hot because of the fire they're giving me but my body is cold. <laughs> Guys, Joburg is cold. Oh, Cape Town is cold as well. We see some answers. Ah, oh, you guys are doing so good. Oh, guys, well done. I'm so proud of you. This is excellent. And I'm so glad to see that we all remembered the exponent for x is going to change. So we know that when we say 2xy times x, we're going to end up with 2x squared y. And that is such, such an important thing to remember. So well done. When we multiply the 2xy and the minus 3, we need to remember our signs. So we know we're going to get a negative 6xy. That's a weird looking 6. Let's just fix that. Oh, no. 
6xy. Awesome. So now we can write our expression 2x squared y minus 6xy. Are these terms like terms? Just a yes or no very quickly. Well done. Woo, my people on fire. So they're not like terms, which means we can't add them. It stays exactly as it is. 2x squared y minus 6xy. Well done, guys. Awesome, awesome, awesome work. Okay, so let's take a bit of a brain break here. Get up, stretch, do your thing, move your body. Um. Woo. So what I have here is a um, what we call a, a magic square. Now, a magic square is when if you find the sum, so if you add the numbers along any uh, horizontal line, any vertical line, or any diagonal line. So what I mean is if you add these numbers, if you add the diagonals, if you add a horizontal, you should get the same answer for all of those. So based on that, we want to know what A, B, and C are. Kendra, I think your stretch is deserve, deserve for Vision Active to know was the best one. I'm, I'm busy like watching Kendra do stretches. Oh, no, I'm like, I missed yes. it. Kendra, do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yes, Kendra. I see also when he's steady stretching. Guys, it's good to stretch, okay? I it's think we must nominate a stretch leader. Yeah, definitely. Kendra. I Kendra. <laughs> Faith, I see you need some stretches. You see, you've been holding your hands. It means you need to stretch. So if you can get out of your seat and stand up, Faith, so that you can breathe proper and then come back to your seat so you can do some uh, magic squeeze. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. I see some smile, Faith. Um, Finally. <laughs> Finally, guys, you're doing it. Let's try this magic square, guys. I think it's fun. I love it. So when you are giving your answers, can you please give your answers as like A equals to this, B equals to this, C equals to this. And remember that when you add A plus seven plus six, it needs to give you a certain answer. And when you are adding A plus nine plus four, it needs to give you the same answer. So just remember that, okay? You guys have to be careful. If you need a little hint, what I would start with is the one line that I have all the numbers. So I would add six plus five plus four to see what all of my lines should add up to. And then hopefully we can get A, B, and C from there. Yep. That's a good start. Teacher Sam already gave us a hint. So this magic square is telling us that when you add the horizontal, it is the same number when you add the vertical and it should be the same number when you add a diagonal. That's what it says. It's quite fun, guys. Once you understand it, I think you're going to enjoy it. And I hope you all enjoyed my math stroke. Magic square is an important. Math stroke is important. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give it a try. Let's do. Can you see Le? I see you go. Let's give it a try. Lisedi, give it a try. Does anyone want to tell me what six? Whoopsie daisy. Six plus five plus four equals. So what? What sum should we be working with? Oh, Faith, you're on it. Woo. 15. Hey, well done. Well done. <laughs> so we know that all of our rows, diagonals, horizontals must add up to 15. Seen some nice answers. Let's keep going. Oh, someone's car side is like playing a jam. <laughs> are you jamming to the yeah, outside got a music? Like, <laughs> going on in here. 
Amazing. <laughs> so, Ofense, if you think B is one, you need to add six plus one plus eight, and it needs to give you 15. If it doesn't give you 15, it means that it's wrong. Okay. So that's how we play this game. Yep. Sepang, you're only giving us A, B without <laughs> the answers. We're looking for the answers, Sepang. <laughs> Sepang says A is two. Okay, so Sepang, did you add two plus seven plus six and it gave you a 15? And did you also add A plus nine plus four that gives you 15? If it does, then that, that's, a, that's a right thing to do. Yes, Sepang, then you win. And it means that that's two A equals to two. Well done. Well done, everyone. Okay, everyone so A's, is, yeah. Sorry, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking at their charts and keep talking. <laughs> awesome. So A is definitely two. So we can chuck that in there if we want to. Um, if we look at this row with B in it, six plus eight is 14. So B is indeed one. Well done, and then people. if we have a look at this horizontal here, eight plus four is 12. So C is exactly three. So those are our values for A, B, and C. Well done, guys. Good work. All righty. Let us see what we have here. Okay, so back into algebra. We're excited. We got this. We've got our expression of 3y plus 7 times 2y plus 6x minus negative 20x. So give me a quick thumbs up, thumbs down. Would you like to try this by yourselves? Should I let you go? Give it a try. Thumbs up, yes. Okay, Theo is keen. Let's go. Give it a try. So identify your terms, simplify each term, and then you can look for your like terms to simplify your expression. Right, if you're a bit stuck, these are your terms. And so once you know your terms, you can simplify each one. And just as a reminder, this is like the example we just did. There's a coefficient of negative one there. All righty. Oh, I'm excited. This question, it's, it's, it's really spicy, guys. So let's do this. <laughs> Spice is the excitement of life. Yeah, you know. <laughs> okay, I'm seeing some answers starting to trickle in. That's awesome. Keep them coming. Remember, simplify each term individually before you start looking for like terms. So what I mean by that is the first term we can't simplify, it's just 3y. But the second term, I need to multiply the 7. And in the last term, I need to remember that I've got a negative 1 times a negative 20x. So it's also sort of a multiplication, but to one term. And once you've done that, then we start looking for our like terms. Okay, so let's have a see. I'm seeing some awesome answers here. Well done, guys. 
So our first term, like I say, we can't simplify. It's just three Y. But our second term, we need to times the seven into the bracket. Again, if you need to, feel free to have a little um, scribble section on your paper to do your working out. So we've got seven times two Y, which gives us 14 Y. And then we've got seven times six X, which gives us 42 X. So that second term, simplifies to plus 14y plus 42x. Then when I go to my third term, I now have to say negative one times negative 20x. And we know that when we multiply two negatives, I get a positive. So this is positive 20x. So that is my simplified third term. Now I can look for my like term. So whoopsie daisies. Grab a highlighter, highlight your like terms or underline or do whatever you want to do. 3y and 14y are like terms because they have the same variable with the same exponent. And 42x and 20x are like terms because again, same variable, same exponent. And so what I have is 3y plus 14y, so 17y, and 42x plus 20x is 62x. So well done. I saw a lot of right answers there. If you went wrong, please make sure you've got the correction and you know where you went wrong. And if you don't know where you went wrong, please, please, please ask so that um, I can help you. Okay. Right, let's have a look over here. So I'll start you off and then you can have a go and try. First thing I always do, identify my terms. So term one, term two, term three, and term four. And we know those are the terms because the plus and the minus signs separate them for me. So I wanna go and simplify each of these terms. Term one, I can't simplify, it's just three X squared. But term two, I can multiply the negative X into the bracket. Term three, I can't simplify, it's just minus x, y. But term four, I can simplify this fraction. So give it a try, see what you come up with, pop your answer in the chat, and then we'll start to go through it as I start to see some answers, or if you need help, let me know. You can do this, guys. Let's try it. What's wrong? What's wrong at the hang? Let's, let's try to do this. It's quite exciting. So teacher Sim already breathed us a lot, guys. She's so nice to us. <laughs> she already gave us all the hints and the hints and that. So we already know what to do. So if you feel a little bit lost, you are welcome to raise your hand and you can talk to teacher Sam and I. Please do. We like to hear you. Okay, remember when you're multiplying with negatives, remember what happens if you multiply two negatives together, make sure your signs are all correct. One of the biggest places where we lose marks is we forget about our signs and that's such a silly reason to, to lose marks. So make sure you're doing your signs correctly. There we go. They gave us the hint, hint. You better grab it. All right, and just for term four, that uh, 2x cubed over x, you need to think back to your um, exponent laws because we've got an x cubed divided by an x. And there's lots of different ways you can do it and you must do it how you're comfortable. But just uh, go back to those exponent laws if you're struggling a little bit there for um, the fraction in term four. <clears throat> Right, are we all okay? Managing. This is 
some very, very focused faces. It's great. Okay, let us start to have a look. Okay, so hopefully the first um, simplification that you needed to do, so the multiplications, the bracket isn't too hard. I think what will be a little bit trickier is the fraction, which is cool. That's absolutely fine. So like I said, the first term we can't do anything with. But the second term we can multiply into the bracket. So if you want, again, have your scribble section. We've got a minus x times a minus 5x. Now I'm just putting them into brackets to remind myself that there are signs I need to be uh, careful of. So we know a negative times a negative is a positive, and we know x times 5x is then positive 5x squared. Then we've got the negative x times the negative 2y. So again, brackets because I need to just remember that there's going to be a sign change negative x times negative 2y, positive 2xy. So there's no exponent change there, but that's because my variables are different. Whereas in this multiplication, I was multiplying the same variables, x times x, so it became x squared. So that simplifies to plus 5x squared plus 2xy. Like I said, oh, that's not good, y. The third, the third term is not going to change because I can't simplify it anymore but that fourth term that fourth term I've got 2x cubed divided by x now that, as I said lots of different ways you can think about it but what this comes down to is 2x cubed is actually saying 2 times x times x times x those little dots in between the x's represent a multiplication that's another way that we can write multiplication and that's all being divided by an x. And what I know is that when I multiply the same thing by itself, they actually just cancel each other out and become one. And so I can cancel one x in my numerator with the x in the denominator, leaving me with 2x squared. If you think of it in terms of your exponent laws, if you've got an x cubed divided by an x, we know what we do is we subtract those exponents and three minus one is two. So that gives me x squared anyways. So however you choose to think about it, it's completely up to you. You must work with what works for you. And so this last term, this fourth term, simplifies to a negative two x squared. Now, once we've done all of that, we can now look for our like terms. So I'll start with my x squared terms. Those are all my x squared terms. And then I have x, y terms that are like terms. And so I can add them together. So if I start with my x squared terms, 3x squared plus 5x squared is 8x squared. 8x squared minus 2x squared is 6x squared. Then I've got my plus 2xy minus xy. And so that just leaves me with minus, oh, minus plus xy. If you want to put the one xy, so you want to put the coefficient of one in front there, that's absolutely fine. But it's not necessary to ever write a coefficient of one, just like it's not necessary to ever write an exponent of one. Those aren't like terms, so I can't do anything with that. So that's where I leave it. So that was quite a tricky one. So take a second. Go through it, mark your, your answer, and then just give me a thumbs up or thumbs down, or if you have a question, let me know in, in the chat or raise your hand. Let's go, guys. Let's do the voting. Let's see. There we go. Thumbs up. Good, good, good. We see you guys. Ooh, Princess is feeling like, you know, half, 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 Princess. That's okay. Princess, do you have a question or are we just sort of, we need to do some more practice with, with this stuff?
Mushlago, you as well, the city. If you sort of give me a, a half half, if it's just more practice, don't stress, we're gonna have more practice. If you have a specific question, please ask it so that we can um, figure it out and I can guarantee that someone else has the same question as you. So let's uh, get it. Okay, so uh, Scarlett has said, I said 2xy minus xy equals xy. All right, so the reason for that is because so if I look at those two terms over here, I'm starting with, and I'm just going to draw my number line to help me here. I'm starting with 2xy. So I'm starting at a positive 2xy. I'm now taking one of those xy's away. So I'm moving towards the negative side of my number line. And if I'm only taking one away, that means I'm left with one xy. And so that's why I said you can write a one in front of it to show that you have one x, y left, but you don't have to. X, y and one x, y are the same, same term. Okay, so I hope that helps a little bit. Wusundile, we're definitely going to have more practice. Um, so don't stress. I know this is a lot. And I know that we're dealing with um, some uh, complicated processes that we need to get used to. That with practice, like I say, it'll become a little bit easier. And we're going to do some more questions in any case. All righty. And guys, even at the end of this lesson, if you still aren't feeling 100% confident, we're going to keep doing more. So just keep coming back, just keep practicing, and we'll get there. All righty. So I don't know. I'm going to skip three for the sole purpose of let's do something that looks a little bit more like what we've um, already been doing. So question four, we've got minus 3x squared minus 2x, all, di <laughs> all being divided by x, plus 2xy times x minus 2y minus 5x squared y. So let's work through this one together. Remember, step number one, identify your terms. So my terms, oh no, my terms here are the fraction, that's term one, the 2xy times x minus 2y. And my third term is minus 5x squared y. So I've got three terms there. That's step number one. Step number two is to simplify each of those terms. So I'm going to start with term one. We've got minus 3x squared minus 2x all being divided by x. So we know that we can separate these fractions. So let's do that. Or let's do it in our, in our scribble section. I'll have minus 3x squared over x, and I will have minus 2x over x. Those are my separate fractions that I can now simplify. So if I start with my minus 3x squared divided by x, firstly, quickly pop it in the chat. What is a negative divided by a positive? What sign should I get? Pop it in the chat for me. What is a negative divided by a positive? Well done, my people. Keep those answers coming. Okay. Well done, it's, guys. Yeah. So it's a negative. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. If you want a little trick for yourself, this always makes my kids giggle because I then become much fun to them. We can remember SNV. So SNV is not like in the movies for the things it stands for. It stands for signs, numbers, <laughs> variables. I won't say the things, but you know one. what I mean, right? That was signs, <laughs> numbers. See guys, maths teachers are super funny. We don't get the credit we deserve. Variables. <laughs> Definitely, that was funny. <laughs> And so what we do is we do each of these things in steps. So the first thing we did was the sign. What is a negative divided by a positive? Negative, sign done. Now I go to the numbers. The numbers that I'm actually working with here are three divided by one, which we know is three. So that's my number sorted. So negative three. Then I move on to my variables. What is X squared divided by X? Well, we know X squared divided by X is then just x and so through snv or signs numbers variables we could break down our um, division so we've divided the uh, minus 3x squared divided by x 
And now we want to do the same thing with minus 2x over x. So SNV, we know a negative divided by a positive is a negative. Again, 2 divided by 1 is just 2. And x divided by x, well, we know they actually just cancel out to form 1. So we've just got a minus 2 there. So we've got minus 3x minus 2. My second term I now need to simplify. I need to multiply the 2xy into the bracket. So if I go to my scribble section, I've got 2xy times x, and I have 2xy times minus 2y. Again, be careful with the exponents because 2xy times x is 2x squared y. You can use SNV for multiplication as well. So in the second one, a positive times a negative is a negative. So that's my signs. 2 times 2 is 4. So I've got a negative 4. And then my variables, xy times y is xy squared. So you can use SNV for both multiplication and division. So simplifying my second term, I've got plus 2x squared y minus 4xy squared. And then we said the third term we can't actually do anything with, so it's just minus 5x squared y. And then once I've got that, oh, gracious me, I can find my like terms. So I get my highlighter. I've got a negative 3x, but I don't have any more x terms. So that's the only term I have. I have my constant negative 2, but I don't have any more constants. So that's it. I then have my x squared y terms, and I've got two of those. I've got 2x squared y and the minus 5x squared y. And then lastly, I've got my minus 4xy squared. So I actually have four groups of terms here. Now, the, uh, the only one I can actually simplify is the x squared y group. So everything else says as it is. So I've got minus 3x minus 2. Then I can simplify. So 2x squared y minus 5x squared y is minus 3x squared y. And then I've got my minus 4xy squared. That's it. There's no more like terms. So that's my answer. Now, what's important is if your answer is in a different order. So say, for example, you had minus 3x squared y minus 2 minus 4x squared xy squared minus 3x. That's exactly the same answer. As long as the coefficient and the sign is correct for the um, different terms, absolutely fine. Okay. So we've got like five minutes. So I'm just going to ask for a little thumbs up how or thumbs down how we're feeling after that. Or if you have any questions, please, please, please ask. Let's do this, guys, so we can get we can get our quizzes. She did well today. Kendra, is that a oh no, that's not a hand up. <laughs> well done, guys. Okay, get in I, there. That's what I like to see. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is we haven't done question four and question six. However, don't worry about question four and question six. You're welcome to try them and you can still hopefully see them. If you would like, and it's not homework, I don't expect it done for next week. If you want another one to practice, try and, and do question five. And what I will do is uh, when we start the lesson, I'll put that answer up so that when you come in and we're waiting for everyone to join, you can mark it. But there's another one for you to practice in the meantime, if you're sort of this thumbs up, thumbs down, I need a little bit more practice. Not homework. If you don't want to do it, don't have to do it. But there's question five if you would like to have a practice. And if you want to try, oh, gracious me. And if you want to try three and six, you're more than welcome to. The question five is sort of what we have been um, practicing now. Okay.